Brr, is anybody else cold? It is getting really cold out there, as it is almost winter. Today is November 30th, which means tomorrow is December 1st. Is anyone excited about winter? Our storybook today is going to be an educational one where you guys get to learn and I get to read for you. The title of this book is The Great Big Water Cycle Adventure. The Great Big Water Cycle Adventure, written by Kay Barnham, illustrated by Maddie Frost. Did you know that the same water has been falling as raindrops for billions of years? It travels around our planet again and again. The journey it takes is called the water cycle. Are you ready to dive into the great big water cycle story? The sun is a very important part of the water cycle. When the hot sun shines on our planet, the water in oceans and seas becomes warmer. As this happens, the water changes from liquid into a gas called vapor. The water vapor rises because it is warm. As the vapor travels higher, it cools and changes from an invisible gas into tiny droplets of water and ice. When the tiny droplets join together, clouds form. As more and more droplets stick to each other, they grow bigger and bigger. The droplets in the clouds become too big and heavy to stay in the air. The water droplets then fall back to earth as rain, hail, sleet, and snow. When the water lands on our planet, its never-ending journey continues. Where does it go next? This depends on where the water falls. If water falls into the oceans and seas, then the water cycle starts all over again. If water falls on land, some of it runs over the surface and trickles into streams. Small streams join larger streams. These flow into rivers. Some rivers and streams tumble and gush down the mountainside as waterfalls. This water travels back to sea. Some waterfalls or runs into ponds, lakes, and reservoirs. This water may flow onward to the sea. The sun may turn it into vapor again, or the water may stay put for many years. When summers are long and hot, more water turns into vapor. Lakes and rivers disappear. Water will also fall onto plants and trees. It may trickle to the ground and get soaked up by plant roots. This helps plants grow. Water droplets on leaves are warmed by the sun and turn back into vapor. Some water falls on land and seeps deep down underground. It then fills the cracks and gaps between soil, sand, and rocks. This groundwater moves slowly. It takes a long time to return to the sea. Other times, water falls as snow. When it lands on mountain tops and in cold places, it does not melt at once. It may take a very long time to return to the sea. Some of the world's water has been frozen for thousands of years. It is trapped in glaciers, which are slow-moving rivers of ice. The water cycle does not always run smoothly. When there is too much rain, the water builds up too fast and there are floods. When too little rain falls, there is less water in streams and rivers. This can lead to droughts. Did you know that most of the water on our planet is salty seawater? Only a small amount is the fresh water we need to survive. Over 7 billion people live on our planet. By using less water, we can make sure that there is enough for everyone. 
The great big water cycle adventure never ends. Follow the arrows to see how water goes around and around. So first, the sun warms up our planet, water vapor rises, clouds form, water droplets fall back to earth, streams and rivers carry water back to the sea, groundwater travels slow back to the sea, and water is stored in oceans, ice caps, underground, and in the atmosphere. So now you guys know how the water cycle works. What do you think? Isn't it exciting? Keep reading those books. You never know what you will learn. Alright guys, that's all the time I have for today. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Pick up a book at the library if you can. And as always, I will leave you with You are smart. You are important. And you are loved. Bye.